Welcome everyone, today we have a new guide for Tower Fantasy. As you guys know, and as you can see behind me, PvP is now available after level 31, and right now I've tried PvP a little bit. So in this video, I'll briefly explain some of my theories and also logic how I PvP. I'm not saying I'm the best guys, I'm just saying I want to share you some basic tips to help you have a higher success rate. Now before we get into the PvP in details, it's quite important to know what are the times available and how the PvP is more balanced. So the first thing is, it starts at 12 o'clock. So basically server time resets at 5 o'clock, which is China time, and then it will start at 12 o'clock Chinese time, I believe. And this will also include that the PvP is balanced. So basically weapon stats, relic stats, weapon resonance, and also the effect of matrices are disabled in PvP, which means things will be more balanced. Do you do also want to note there will be 50% reduced healing? And even though, as you can see later in my strategies, I'm focused on healing, you should be aware of this. So we can't pretty much go double healers. And what I have planned for PvP is over here I've made basically three combinations of weapons, and I'll be focusing mainly on DPS. So my attacker, I have two attacker weapons and also one healing weapon. The second thing we should be aware of is you do have two lives as you fight TVP. The second time when an opponent or when you dies, you will resurrect or they will resurrect at a random stop, random spot with full HP and also increase damage by 25%. So this does give you a greater chance of comeback. There will be five minutes in total to fight and the platform will shrink every 75 seconds. It's quite important to understand this, and if I do come to my video over here, I can show you guys a brief, little brief over here. I think there was a time, yes, there was a time I was, like, disadvantaged. I died the first time, but after coming back with bonus damage, I was able to kind of even the scores, and then eventually I was able to defeat the enemy closely. So it was quite nice to know that you do gain 25% bonus damage after resurrection to have a good chance of comeback, because the enemy was having really good shots at me at the start. So notice I died really quickly against him, and I was able to come back from dying and using the bonus damage to my advantage. Now finally, we should be aware there will be additional rewards for reaching higher rankings in PvP. The lowest being private and also the highest being the Grand Marshal. So the items over here are listed. I don't think there's a lot of Dark Crystals, but they're okay. So from 100 up to 500 Dark Crystals. And there's also a Dust Wheeler vehicle. So there's also a limited vehicle for the number one place in PvP, the Grand Marshal. So now what I'll do is I'll share with you guys some of my replays and also method of strategies in terms of PvP because I did fight about six times. I, I'm currently 100% win rate, but I do know it will get harder. So I want to share you guys some tips and also advices to save you time on PvP and also to have a higher chance of winning in the combat against different opponents. So right away, as we can see, I'll come over to my character and I've actually tried three sets of PvP weapons. So the first set I've tried is with one of the supporting healing weapon from Nemesis, and also one cryo bow, and also one melee weapon. So I have a ranged sniper shot, and also a melee sh shatter break. The second one I was considering is having triple ranges to keep myself away from the enemy, and also having both electric and also having one cryo bow. The final one I tried again is using one healing weapon and also two damaging weapon. So one melee, one like medium medium range, and also one long range weapon. So. What is the focus of PvP? What I realize is now do keep in mind guys, I have not PvP a lot. I've tried about six games, so I can't give you the most detailed summary. But I think some tips and also advices is quite nice with this. You can see that I have made 100% win, but only from six matches. And I do believe the first three matches are from bots. So we'll be focusing on the match that are versus real players. And I guess to start the PvP right off, I do believe that nutrition, the survival of your character is more essential than dealing damage right away. So that is why at the start of the fight, I always switch into a healing weapon. Now if you do not have the Nemesis limited banner weapon, you can consider having a different healing weapon. I do think surviving longer than an opponent is essential, and eventually it will be a trade-off HP right? But if you can survive longer than them, so for the Nemesis weapon, each time I dash, I'll be getting healing. And as long as I keep my ground and also I try to deal damage from afar, I can get a slight edge at the start of the game and wait for the other player to kind of panic and make a different move. And, you know, I'm basically keeping my distance, spamming my skills. Now, do keep in mind, as the time goes on, what's going to happen is the platform is going to shrink. 
and if you do get too close to an opponent who is mostly melee character, that is not good. Notice here I try to get too close to the opponent, not knowing that he's focused on melee, and he starts to spin to wing on me, right? So instantly I realize I'm a range kind of DPS, I don't want to get close to him. So it's quite important to determine what weapons your enemy is using, and if they're focused mainly on melee, try to stay away from them. But eventually, as the platform shrinks, as you're gonna see over there, notice the platform starts to shrink. This will severely disadvantage to melee. Oh, severely disadvantage. Advantage. <laughs> Let me say it again. Severely disadvantage the range kind of choices of weapon you pick. So do be careful of this. What I did find was really useful was Nemesis, of course. Again, I know most of us might not have this weapon, but if you do have this weapon, the Nemesis weapon actually constructs a little tower over here, the electric tower, as you can see. And those electric towers are really good in dealing with residual damage. As long as, long as I stay in that area, it is actually really beneficial for me to you know, deal continuous damage and keep the enemy away from me, so it allows me to do more range attacks. But if you're planning to play a melee weapon route, make sure you wait for the platform to shrink to a certain level, then engage on enemy. Notice now as the platform gets smaller and smaller, it is increasingly difficult for me to kind of maneuver, and the enemy will have a better chance of shattering me and also hitting me. Now the focus of weapon switching is that you always want to be on the healing side, because most of the time some skills might not be able to hit. So if you're able to heal yourself continuously, you will have the advantage in HP. The next part we'll focus on is actually on shattering enemies. Once you have shattered the enemy, I do believe they get a small stun, and by doing that, I, I think he's going to shatter me soon. <laughs> so once you have shattered the enemy, you'll get a small stun, and then follow up with another weapon that deals additional damage that is onto the enemy's like on shield body is much more desirable. So I try to find one if I can, maybe it's not on this fight. So basically I use my melee weapon to crow when the enemy gets closer and I do try to shatter them. Let's see if I can find a chance that I get to shatter him. So I actually killed him before shattering. So the ideal situation is that once I get to shatter enemy, I will switch into a different weapon or a weapon with a readily skill available and I will be using that skill to deal additional damage to the enemy. So basically my current plan of gameplay for PvP is to heal as much as I can, to keep my distance until the platform shrinks, and then try to shatter an enemy and follow up with a massive damage. Now I do know it is more advantage to have the Nemesis weapon, simply because she can heal and also she does continuous on-field damage, which do give me an advantage against the enemy. And the enemies who are moving around still get hit by my homing missiles, which is really good when she casts a spell. Now I'm sure there's a lot of more tips and also a lot of more ways to do PvP more effectively. So if you guys do know more methods and also more tips for PvP, definitely let us know. I'm still learning the PvP system. It is quite fun and quite challenging and exciting as well. So do let us know in the comments if you find new ways to, you know, PvP and also new method and new combinations or maybe new strategies. And thank you for watching this video guys. Now keep in mind guys, I'm still very new to PvP. If I do discover a new method and some new ways to fight, I'll let you guys know as well. Now if you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe on our YouTube channel and for more content related to Tower of Fantasy. I'll be looking into more free to play content and I've tried to look into minimal spending or no spending method to clear the game and also achieve the highest amount of free currencies and also free to play you know, characters and also weapons in the game.